A writing job at Motor Trend can be described like this, every year, you drive every new car, truck, SUV, and minivan on the market, and you have to generate an opinion about each and every one. At some point in the past I spent time behind the wheel of the old QX50, however, I have no memory of doing so and as such hold no opinion of Infiniti's compact premium SUV. Well, other than it was never much to look at, though the malformed metal goes back to the pre johanda Nissan days when the lumpy thing was called the EX35. But things change. I just spent the day with the all-new 2019 QX50. Let's just say I won't be forgetting this one anytime soon. The new QX50 is handsome and honestly good looking. Detractors will no doubt say something about how Infiniti's newest crossover resembles a Mazda CX-3. So what? The Ford Fusion has looked like an Aston Martin for years now. We've all survived. The QX50 shows off Infiniti's talent and affinity for putting sharp creases into curved metal. Such handiwork is impressive from a stamping perspective with the added benefit of looking premium. Plus, the crescent kink in the D-pillar is the first time that particular design trade has worked on a production Infiniti. For proof, check out the hard side of a Q60. Tell me that C-pillar isn't odd. With the QX50, it totally works. The interior is, for the most part, pretty spiffy, as well, especially on higher trimmed models with the blue suede accents. I do have one giant gripe, but let's save that for later. The QX50 will go down in the annals of car, geek, history for one very important reason. It's the first production vehicle to come with Infiniti's VC Turbo 2.0 liter inline 4. The VC stands for variable compression, and the VC Turbo can run at anywhere from 8 to 1 to 14 to 1. If the governing computer sees a need for 10.5 to 1, the engine's compression can switch to that ratio. The VC Turbo also features variable displacement, though A, VD Turbo would have been a horrible name, and B, the displacement grows only from 1,992 cubic centimeters to 1,997, it remains a 2.0 liter throughout. Long story short, the high 14 to 1 compression ratio is great for low load, high MPG cruising. The 8 to 1 ratio is best for creating big power with the help of a turbocharger. Based on the driver's right foot, the engine literally repositions the bottom end of the connecting rod to vary the compression. Peak output is 268 horsepower at 5,600 revolutions per minute and 280 pounds to foot of torque from 1,600 to 4,800 revolutions per minute. The VC Turbo replaces the old VQ3.7 liter V6, which was good for 325 horsepower at 7,000 revolutions per minute and 267 pounds to foot of torque at 5,200 revolutions per minute. Obviously, the old engine made 17.5% more power than the VC Turbo does. But look at where the VQ delivered its power. Let's be honest, no QX50 owner ever intentionally revved his or her engine out to 7000 revolutions per minute. Plus, not only is torque increased with the new engine, but the peak also shows up at very low revs. As the ever quotable Bob Lutz famously said, Americans buy horsepower but drive torque. In other words, yeah. The big number is lower, but do people buying SUVs like the QX50 actually care? I doubt it, and Infiniti is betting on them not, either. Besides, compared to the 2.0-liter turbo i4s found in the competition, Audi Q5, Mercedes-Benz GLC, BMW X3, Lexus NX, the Infiniti makes more horsepower. Also important as gas prices edge upward again, fuel economy is up by a whopping 35% compared to the old car. 26 to 27 miles per gallon combined instead of 20. The VC Turbo has some other cool features, too, such as a multipath cooling system, variable geometry oil pumps, and plasma transferred wire arc cylinder liners, as found on the Nissan GTR. The turbo bolts right to the cylinder head to reduce spool up time and turbo lag. 